in the patients that you've seen, what percentage would you say are actually there's physical trauma, meaning an injury, something happened there versus people coming in with just pain? It didn't come from, let's say I was in a car accident or had this injury or was working out. It's just chronic pain. Boy, I don't know what the percentages are for yeah. my practice, um, but it, it, there is quite a good percentage of people that are in chronic pain and, you know, trying to flesh that out can be a bit of a challenge and it can have variable, you know, origins, you know, as far as that goes. Um, so we try to address the whole body and that includes the mind, soul, uh, you know, physical body and uh, address all the potential uh, aspects of their pain, pain pattern. So, and for people with back pain that were probably recommended, I know a good friend of mine has had back pain since he was younger, uh, you know, got really into working out, just tweaked his back one time. It just never went away. It kept going. He got put on pain medication. Then they went in for surgery that didn't work. And spinal surgery is, you know, a tough one. It is. I tried to push him into the chiropractic route. He said, listen, they're the best surgeons around. They'll figure it out. They didn't. It sucks. But you know, when, when you see a patient like that, if they're open to chiropractic care, what, what are the, you know, what, what's the success rate that possibly they won't have to go into surgery, knowing everyone's different, but also knowing that possibly a, a chiropractic adjustment over time can alleviate that. Well, you know, I was just um, recently there was a study that came out in the JMPT, Journal of Manipulative and Th uh, Physiological Therapeutics, and it was showing that, you know, for neck um, pain specifically, that with chiropractic, there's about a two and a half times less escalation of services. So there is opportunity when you and, and that's consistent with the literature over the years. I mean, there's opportunity to to get benefit and avoid surgery and escalation of other services, it's not 100%. And it's sometimes chiropractic and surgery is, ne is necessary, uh, you know, chiropractic before and after. Um, I've had patients where we've tried our best to keep them from surgery, and it's, you know, necessitated right. to, to get there. In fact, I've had a couple of patients where I had, and I'm, I'm not referring to surgery that often, but there are a couple of patients saying, man, I think you really need to consider surgery. That you're getting relief here, but you know the the MRI shows that not only do you have a disc bulge, but it's ruptured, mm -hmm. and part of the fragments are lodged into your nerve root. You know, and so I can I'm all I'm doing is giving you some pain relief. Um, go get that taken care of. You know, and then we'll still probably need to work on your back because it's it needs help. You know, um, but you can avoid it's and and that's one of the things that's been well established uh, in chiropractic is that there's opportunity to avoid you know, getting into more invasive care. Um, and then if you do need to get into invasive care, there's good opportunity to help your back get strong after. So uh, it's a positive for, you know, avoiding surgery, but it's also a positive for maximizing your potential from surgery. And what you're talking about there to me is, is the beauty of an integrative approach, right? You're saying, yeah. listen, chiropractic isn't for everyone. You might have to go into surgery go see the surgeon, right? That's the honest talk that you should have with a yes. patient. Whereas yeah. I know many surgeons, I would say, don't even bother with chiropractor. We just, let's just cut you up, right? It's yeah. not that integrative approach. And right. it, it doesn't make sense to me because you look at all the things that could go wrong in a surgery. You're cutting someone up. That's trauma alone. There's a high probability something happened there. Why not take the steps that lead up why not even look at, all right, diet, go see a psychologist, then go see a chiropractor, go, and then lead up to that as that sure. could be your last option. But in medicine, how it is today, it's non-integrative, really. It's this way or the highway sort of approach. And that's why I could appreciate a chiropractor's take to say, hey, you're going to need surgery. I could try and do this, but it's better that you have surgery when it doesn't reciprocate from the other side. Often there are some, but often right. it's just go straight into surgery. You know, and you hit a really good point. The uh, what's really hard uh, for any doctor, and I know it probably happens in your clinic as well, is the educational part, yep. is trying to help people have the understanding, you know, for example, you just said it, surgery itself is an injury. It will leave you permanently weaker than before you had surgery. Mm -hmm. And any good surgeon is going to, you know, um, account for that and hopefully articulate that with their patient. And, and most good surgeons are going to say, hey, let's not do surgery until you're at your absolute wit's end on this. 
But people, for some reason, again, even if you go into a surgical scenario and you get a pain relief, you thought that all the dysfunction in your spine is, is good now. And, and that's kind of a false sense of security. And it's kind of the sad part. It's like, no, you really need to take better care of your spine now for at least the next 18 to 24 months, because that's how long it's going to take for your body to really repair and rebuild itself post-surgery. Um, because there's a certain amount of time that, you know, it's like you sprain your ankle, it's six to eight weeks is the in initial healing time. But total healing time continues to go on with repair and remodeling 12 months, 14 months, 16 months. And if during that time, you're not doing anything proactive to uh, encourage better function, spinal function, spinal joint function, those kinds of things, you're just going to, like I was saying earlier, you're going to take that spot where it had surgery, it didn't heal per perfectly well, it's going to move the pressure up a level. And guess what happens with people? Well, I had a surgery. I was good for a couple of years, but then it came up again. I had to go back in and get another surgery. It, it's just, that's the hard part. It's like, okay, we, we put the fire out, whether with chiropractic or with surgery, but how do we help you take care of your spine? How do we really encourage you to take care? And that's where that multi-integrative approach works the best for patients. I mean, what you just said is exactly the reason my father got out of pain services and then being chief of a pain service at a hospital and into integrated and started looking around because he was actually seeing that he was doing the surgery he was doing the spinal you know implants and everything and a year or two went by and they come back he said it was a revolving door and he, yeah. he and he couldn't do anything more with what he had in his toolkit at the time and that's when he started to travel the world and say what else is out there and there was a lot out there and he saw yeah. well this could be pretty good 